let's talk a little bit about RNA sequencing. So the advantage of using RNA sequencing, this is kind of taken over doing uh, for expression analysis from microarrays because microarrays we're talking the last uh, in the uh, microarray worksheet the limitations of that you can only detect the things you think to spot onto your your array and so like that intron or whatever if, if you have an intron that's not supposed to be there you wouldn't see it on the array because you don't have a spot for that to detect that with rna sequencing on the other hand you sequence the entire pool of rna so everything that's in there you're going to sequence and so if you recall from lecture that next generation sequencing the ones that we're mainly talking about are these in the middle the iron torrent iron ion torrent pyrosequencing alumina and solid they're all what are called short read sequencers and they all um they all give you millions to billions of nucleotides of information they're short read sequencers though so when you get your sequence data out of it, um, you get a whole bunch of little tiny reads um, anywhere from 50 to let's say 100 or 200 nucleotides in size and so what you have to do is you, so in the case of say the microarray example where we're, we're checking um, expression analysis of say a cancer versus healthy tissue you would sequence all of the RNAs out of the healthy tissue you would sequence all of the RNAs out of the cancer tissue you then would align them to the genome and so up here this white line that would be the built genome which we talk about we will talk about in lecture how we get that built um, but when we do sequencing we only get little tiny pieces and so what we'll do is we'll align by sequence similarity you can see here that CACA CACA that's what we have in our sequence and so we know that this read will fit there where this read fits over here okay and then when we're doing sequence uh, RNA sequencing, we do that on now we we align them to our gene to the genome, and the number of sequencing reads we have for any particular region are taken as the quantity of that RNA in that particular sample. And so when we're looking at um, say a cancer versus a healthy tissue, um, genes that are overexpressed in the cancer, we will have more of those RNAs in our sequencing pool, and when we plot them like this, we get it like a histogram across, say, this gene, we would have, if we say, um, if, say, this gene is, is uh, expressed, what we're looking at is um, the cancer expression, and it's, and it's overexpressed in the cancer, then the healthy tissue might look something like that, in which we just get a little bit of expression in the healthy tissue, and we're getting a lot of expression in the cancer tissue, okay, and so with that, what these things are is these are histograms down here are the sequence reads aligned to the genome and so if you notice this gene here here's an exon there's an exon we selected for our mRNA so the introns are spliced out so you see we don't have any sequencing reads aligning to this intron now the example I give in the microarray example microarray example is if you retained that intron and expression levels were the same in your cancer and non-cancer and the problem is, is is in the cancer you got this intron in there which is making the protein function differently then you would actually see sequencing reads in the cancer and not in the in the, in the normal tissue um, so with all that in mind here's an example of um, so we're using RNA sequencing um, to look at uh, some uh, look at gene expression in our genes and so here this is a this is kind of a straightforward kind of uh, question here for number one um, here we have a uh, the histogram is how many reads of a particular gene in the genome where would the exons be located fill in the bar and so like I just showed you here okay where we don't have any reads in the middle where we have introns that's what this would represent so our exons would correspond to where we have histograms for that's where we would get our sequencing reads so remember when we poly a select and we select out the mRNAs we're selecting out those that have been spliced and so the introns have been spliced out and so the exons would be here and so all that we're saying is is going across the whole um, x-axis is 
the nucleotide position, say, going down the chromosome, and then this would be an exon, and this would be an exon, and this would be an intron, because I don't have any RNAs aligning there. Okay. So now what we do is we then can quantify and actually say, okay, I have X number of um, RNAs here, and that's my expression value. So we can plot those numbers and make comparisons between our two samples. And so that's what this graph down below is. And what we're doing is, is plotting on the x-axis, uh, on the y-axis is sample one, what the expression values are. Okay, so that's just kind of a function of the number of reads we have. The higher you go up the y-axis, the more reads we have um, on, uh, in that particular sample versus the x-axis is um, for sample number two. So the further up, further across on the x-axis you go, the, um, the more reads you have in that sample. Um, so when we're plotting, so let's look at some of the questions because this one we can address all of the things I'd like to talk about with these questions. Um, so, um, so where would genes expressed in sample one but not sample two be found? Okay, so what that means is over here's expression of sample two, over here's expression of sample one, and so if you have no expression in sample two, you're going to be over here on the x-axis, but you're going to be going up the y-axis, so these would be the answer to number two. Of, of number two of what samples in uh, expression sample two or sample one but not sample two so now we're here's the hypothetical is if we take sample one and this is a glioma and we label this in green okay if we were to do put these samples onto an array let's compare what rna sequencing a plot like this would compare to a, an array and here we're doing uh, neuro, just regular neural tissue in red, okay? So this is the cancer, and this is the healthy. Oops, that's... This. Cancer. Now, where would green, red, and yellow, and no color spots be? Well, no color would be right here, okay, where you have no expression on either, in either sample, okay. Then, so, no color is at the origin. Where the graph starts. Okay, so yellow, yellow, remember, is equal expression. And so when we're looking at RNA sequencing data, it's equal numbers of reads. And so yellow would be along the diagonal. Okay. But you'd actually kind of take this whole area. Okay, because you, you would expect a little bit of sequence variation from sample to sample. And so really kind of that whole area, but pretty much that diagonal line is where you're getting anywhere along, say here, we got three, and then we go up to here, and it's also three. And so we're getting equal expression between each of our samples. Okay. So yellow is along the diagonal green and red, okay, so let's erase this, put it back, the answer to number two is there, okay. So now green, remember we labeled the glioma in green and the healthy tissue in red, and so where the green reads would be, is where we have more expression in the glioma, or more green. So here we have cancer, and so cancer's on our y-axis, so this 
So this right here is expression of what would be green. And so technically, really kind of this whole area would be the green where we have more expression of the cancer than we do of the healthy tissue. And so would be kind of the top of the graph, whereas the red would be kind of all of this, which would be the bottom of the graph. Okay, so, so where we're getting in the healthy tissue, we have more expression than what we're getting in the, in the cancer tissue. And so the bottom part of the graph would be showing us um, that. So where we're in the graph, would you find upregulated genes in the cancer cells? So the cancer cells, remember, are the green, or, or the cancer cells are on the y-axis. So the upregulated up -regulated genes, that would be all, 3B would be all in this area, would be the upregulated genes in the cancer. So the top part of the graph. Where on the graph would you find the down-regulated genes in the cancer cells? So if this is normal expression. This is this is equal expression, okay? and then as we go, healthy tissues along the x-axis, as and so as we kind of move along the x-axis, we're increasing expression, okay? but we don't have a corresponding expression level uh, in the cancer tissue. So all we're seeing is expression. And this area is just expression in the healthy tissue, less expression than what's found in the, in, the, um, in the cancer tissue. So that would be kind of the 3C, would be kind of this area where we find, in which would include that line of expression there. All of those genes are expressed in the healthy tissue, but not in the cancer. What I circled here, those are being expressed in the cancer but not in the healthy, okay? So where on the graph would you find down-regulated genes in cancer? That would be the bottom of the graph, the same as the red. What's the significance of the diagonal line? We already talked about that. That's all the genes that are equally expressed between the two samples. So if I pick a spot here, I get the same value depending regardless of what sample I go into. And so these are equally expressed in both samples. And what happens to the probability of a gene being differentially expressed the further it gets from the diagonal line? So that's getting at the fact that why I kind of boxed out this whole area is the further you go away from this line is the more expression differences that you're seeing, the greater the expression difference. And so technically anything right here that's off of the off of the diagonal, that is a difference, okay? But when you're talking just a little bit off of the line, that could just be experimental error or just a minor fluctuation. And so you would kind of have to have a statistical cutoff. So the further you get away from the diagonal line um, increases the statistical significance of the expression difference. So what you're really looking for are the ones that are really clearly off of that diagonal line and there's a clear expression difference between the two. Just like microarrays, when you do RNA sequencing analysis, you then have to follow up experimentally um, where you, you're doing this um, based computationally off of the number of sequencing reads. You would then follow up with experiments to validate that any expression differences you're seeing in your sequence data are actual real sequence differences. Um, and that's the basic uh, basics of what RNA-seq is. Um, there's a lot more nuance when you're doing analysis, but that covers um, the main ideas of it. Have a great day.